Welcome to the Cuisine Masterclass series. I'm Sarah Nicholson, the editor of Cuisine. We're kicking things off in real style today, of course, with Simon Wright from the French Cafe. The first course I'm going to do for the Masterclass is a crab and pearl barley risotto. A couple of the key elements of making a successful dish is the quality of the crab. Use good quality fresh crab. And also add the fat at the end, and this will give you a, a much richer and delicate flavour. I'm going to make a crab risotto, and we're going to serve it with some frozen mustard. And we're going to make a beautiful, fragrant little sauce with the shellfish heads. So what we're going to do is just going to warm up a little bit of olive oil. And we're just going to sweat down some shallots, some thyme and some fennel. We just add a little bit of salt. I, I season everything as I go. And that way, uh, at the end of it, you won't have to add too much salt to the dish. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to add the pearl barley. But just be careful you don't make it too toasty. You don't want to add any, uh, any bitterness at this stage. Then we're going to add some wine. And the thing about wine is that it's acidic. So what you want to do is you want to reduce this down to become nice and syrupy. So what you'll do is you'll end up getting that beautiful wine flavour, but without the acid. That's, that's reducing nicely. We're going to add chicken stock. Now you might think it's a bit strange that we're making a crab risotto and I've used chicken stock. And I'll, t I'll talk about this a little bit as we go through um, cooking, but if I did it with fish stock, I know it sounds funny, it would just end up being too fishy. So while we're waiting for that, we are going to make the shellfish sauce. So three different sort of shells I like. I either use uh, longestine or scampi heads, um, crab, or I use uh, lobster. Once again, we're gonna cook in some olive oil. Got some carrot, celery, some shallots, some chili, some fennel. And here I've got some star anise, and some fennel seeds and some coriander seeds. All right, we're gonna make this uh, really quite fragrant. Don't be in too much of a hurry when you're cooking. It's all about patience. You want the natural flavours and the natural sugars and all the, all the good things that are, got these vegetables have got to come out before you start adding something else because otherwise you're just going to stop that cooking process and stop that flavour interaction. So once the, uh, once the vegetables are sweated down nicely, just add your, add your shellfish heads. And toast your, toast your heads off a bit. And, but not too much because if you start to uh, overcook the shellfish heads, you start to re release ammonia, and so um, and that will add bitterness to our uh, sauce in the end as well. Then I add a little bit of tomato paste, mix that around nicely, coat your coat your vegetables and the, and the shellfish heads. And once again, I've got some chicken stock. So we'll bring that up to the boil, and we'll just let it simmer. We won't let it simmer for long, maybe 10, 15 minutes or something, and that's all good. So while, while we're waiting for that, we'll make the uh, the mustard ice cream, some milk. I'm just going to make an anglaise first, like just a, just a basic custard with some uh, egg yolks, a little bit of sugar. You just want to just want to beat your yolks and your sugar together until they get uh, nice and pale. That just crush the sugar down slightly. So just with your hot liquid, just pour it straight onto your onto your yolks and your sugar. Make sure you just. Um, I'm sure you've all made custard before. This is a um, very simple method. Pour it back in the pan. Basically, we're just going to just gently um, thicken this custard. Just gently rub, rub the bottom of the pan, and that will stop it from sticking. What we'll do, we'll just refrigerate this. So our custard is cold, and Bain's just uh, whipping the cream up. We are making an ice cream in effect, but really what it is is a parfait. And a parfait is um, basically an anglaise that's stabilised by some whipped cream. And this, this will work well for us, because once, once we add the mustard, it will stop it from, uh, from sinking. Um, and it just means you don't have to use an ice cream machine at home if you don't have one. So just sort of semi-whip the cream. We've just got a little bit of uh, mascarpone to finish it off. And if you've got a bowl bane, we'll put this in the, in the freezer. Just keep checking it every sort of half an hour or so. As it freezes, just give it a little mix up and you'll make sure it's, uh, it's nice and soft. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pass off the, um, the shellfish sauce. So they've drawn out their, out their flavour. That's basically our stock. But it's not going to be our sauce as such. So we'll put that back on, on the heat. And you want to reduce it down to about 200 mils. So what we're trying to do is, at, at the end, we're going to add a little bit of milk, a little bit of cream and some fresh herbs. And that's going to give us uh, the base to our sauce. You know, reduction is all about intensifying flavor. Once you start adding fats, they, dissip they dissipate flavor. So you want to get some real impact there. And I'm going to add a big handful of uh, some fresh basil and some fresh coriander. So I'm just going to warm that through. That's, that's coming off. Just let that sit for about a minute, and then we'll pass it off. And that way you'll get all that beautiful fresh flavour into that sauce at the end. I don't suppose any of you, if you guys have got some hand blenders, 
it's, a, it's, a bit, it's become a bit old fashioned now to uh, aerate your sauces, but I, st I still love it. It gives you all that flavor with, without giving you too much, um, too much sauce. I just, see now that's, that's beautiful. It just needs a little bit of correcting salt. When the uh, pearl barley has finally absorbed all the liquid, you want, you want to take it down as far as you can it's until you start getting this sort of lovely little syrupy, syrupy type effect. So here I've got some, uh, some fresh crab. Um, it's been taken out of the shell raw. Let the natural heat of the uh, risotto cook that crab. And don't forget, you don't want to cook crab too long. It's a very delicate, delicate shellfish. Um, so that's, that's probably about perfect, really. And then so we'll, ta we'll take that off the heat. And what we're going to do is we're going to add our fats. So we've got some butter, we've got some parmesan, and we've got some mascarpone. This is very good for you, this dish. Yeah, and I even put the herbs on top. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to let that sit there and let that rest. When you put your fats on top of your risotto, and just let them sit and rest for a minute, and then you can fold the fat through, and it starts to thicken slightly, and it starts to sort of lift your risotto up, and it gives you a nicer, much nicer texture, and a much nicer mouth finish. What I love about cooking live for people, and I don't do it very often, but you know, I, I work all, all my time in a closed environment. I never really get to sort of interact with my customers, and this gives me a chance to really sort of be at one with them. Plenty of crab. We're just going to put a little bit of raw fennel, fennel on top and around. And we're going to garnish that with a little bit of uh, some fresh, some fresh fennel as well. Got a little mustard uh, ice cream. Got a little twirl. And then just to finish, a little bit of this uh, aerated sauce. Just gonna put that on there. And we're finished, that's our first dish.